Hello, come in. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, how are you? Okay, not too bad, Nick. I couldn't yes. ask a favour. He's supposed to take his shoes off. Absolutely. 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 No worries. Because the door doesn't slam. Uh, right, uh, well, what am I going to do? Something smells nice. Uh, no, it's just an incense. <laughs> uh, we had a... Uh, I'm going to have to ask for help to move the chair, I think. What's right, that? there's three of you. Okay, I was expecting two, never mind. Um, if I put that down there... Oh, and I put this here... I'm going to ask somebody to give me a hand just moving this this chair, if that's all right. Ah, there we are. You all right? If two can sit there, one there, and I'll, I'll sit are. here. Um, we had uh, workmen, and everything's been moved. Oh, bless. Okay. They'll be doing the windows soon. Yeah, we're really put up nice the scaffolding. View, though. Look at that. Well, it's nice in the morning, because... You just see mist. It's wow. all mist sometimes in the morning. Yeah, do you don't even see the... Hello, they're good to yeah, see you. Good to see you. you don't even see the river in the morning. Wow. It's is it, just is it all... pretty foggy? Yeah, in the morning, I'm not usually up at about six o'clock. Yeah. But it's all mist. You can't even see... You can't even right, see really? across the river at all. It's all mist. And then all of a sudden, it sort of clears from the top. So it goes down. It's very, very pretty. Wow, sweet. That That's, is. Yeah. It's beautiful. You. You're yeah, hello. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello. This is this is Brother Rouse or, or Troy. Yeah. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Nice to see you. Not nice exactly you like well. these guys. Okay. Excuse, Excuse me. me. <laughs> Can I get you something to drink? Or are you okay? I'm. I'm fine. Thank you. I am perfectly You're fine. Okay. We'll take a seat. Yeah. I'll sit. I'll sit here, because due to the workmen, it's it's sixes and sevens everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of books. Oh, some Mexican sombrero. Okay. Mexican sombrero right there. He's from Mexico. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, take me back to my exit right there. <laughs> it's not very comfortable on the head, run on the head. It's really, it's a paper mache one, it really hurts. You couldn't wear it for long. Wow. Do I like Mexico? He does. It's just for oh, a yeah. camera. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, good, good. I'll yeah. just take a picture of it. Yeah, sure, yeah. 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 Take a picture, you yeah. take a picture. All right, yeah. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. I'm, show it to my mom. I'm sorry there's no, no room, but people are in and out of the... Um, that's all right. Uh, uh, the room. Yeah. The room could see it just down there. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did good. You did good. <laughs> take one of me. Go on, take one of me. Okay, <laughs> thanks, right, right. <laughs> You're all right, you're yeah. all right. Oh, yeah. oh, he looks more Mexican than hey, yeah. 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 That's yeah. great, thank you. Thank you, no <laughs> worries. Oh, so, did you travel a lot then? No, no, no. no? No, I've got a lot more books in the back room and downstairs. I've got nowhere to put them. I haven't got the room. I, you have this a place lot is, of books. This place is just too small for me. Do you play instrument? Bigger. Well, that's a ukulele. You play piano? Not, not, not very well, no, not very well. Oh, and I've you have it. a little keyboard there? Yeah, I bought it. Stuff. There's no point selling it. I wouldn't get anything for it. So, <laughs> But, uh, well, I, I lack the discipline to practice. That's my trouble. Mm. Yeah. That's Sounds the trouble. You've got to practice every day, <laughs> really, with it. I have a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Oh, a lot more stuff downstairs. Really? But it's it's just a mess. They put in this um, safety thing throughout the flat and in the bedroom. And I used to have shelves, because I've got wallets with about yeah. two, 3,000 CDs, D DVDs with films and okay. things. And, uh, whoops, that's going to break, isn't it? I. I had, sh well, the shelves go down to here, mm -hmm. and so I had wallets with DVDs inside. I don't keep the boxes that would go up on the shelf, but they put this stuff up there. Oh, so no more shelves. Oh, well, yeah. I can put them in sideways, single. I've got about 10 up, oh, yeah. as opposed to 40. That's so yeah. Yeah. I've just got them all yeah. over the place. Where I put them, I don't know. Um, what are the DVDs of? Of films, all sorts of, all sorts of things. <laughs> religious, I've got uh, folders of religious stuff. Everything, mm -hmm. everything there is. Good. Everything. Um, but films, uh, all sorts of things, really. Well, I think well, when, when did you start like having a lot of books and collecting all the, all kind of stuff? Like you just what the books, it? the yeah. religious books. The 1980s. I was in a, a cult called Oneness, or Jesus Only. Okay. It's um, it's the biggest. Uh, it's the biggest non-Trinitarian group in the world. Uh, about a quarter of all Pentecostals in the world are non-Trinitarian. Um, 
there was a split in the early Pentecostal church. So they believe in Jesus and they'll say Jesus is God, just mm. as you will also say Jesus is God, okay. but just as you will define that differently, so they define it differently. Ah, okay. And it's very, very subtle and very clever. And in South America, uh, about a quarter of all Pentecostals, well, a quarter of all Pentecostals worldwide are now oneness, but in South America and Asia, especially China, has just taken over. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Um, so that's I right. was I involved only good. for seven, eight, nine months. I was baptized in a oneness church in 1988, and I left in early 1989. So it was... Um, you got like it was upset? Pardon? What, were you upset or were you just... Well, I think it's one of life's experiences. It taught me the Bible. It taught me to think for myself okay. and not to rely on pastor so-and-so. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, so nice. I've looked at your booklet, All right. yeah. always, uh, which I found very interesting. I've marked it up yeah. as I've gone through it. Can, can we look? pray? Can we pray first? No, because we don't believe in the same God. But if you can show me we believe in the same God right. and your teachings are in harmony with the Bible, I, yeah. uh, the Bible you've given, the Book of Mormon you've given me, it's here somewhere. <laughs> uh -huh. um, okay. And it's the 2nd of February. Do you remember the date, the Elder? Yeah. yeah. Ba yeah Baha, sure. ba how do I pronounce it? Try it, try it, try it. Baha? Ba ba Bainia. Baena. 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 Um, the date that you put down. So I'll certainly pray with you and be baptized if you can show me that we believe in the same God and that it, all the teachings are in harmony with the Bible. Then okay. I'm more than happy yeah. to, to pray oh. and right. to be baptized. All right. But until then, you have to convince me. I'm not, you know, I'm not a young man as I was in 1988 when I joined the Oneness Movement. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Uh, well, where do we start? Well, uh, this is very interesting. I've, um, I can show you yeah. What well, I've done, if you like, we can go. We can go. We can go through it. I have been looking at your. Um, I, I don't have the internet here. Mm -hmm. That's why I go to the community room. Mm -hmm. But it's frozen on the internet, and I've befriended Russell M. Nelson. Is he the head guy? He's the prophet on the earth today, yes. Right. Uh, so I've prevented him. And I also told him, I've got two Mormon missionaries coming in, rather than be three. But he says, this is your Russell M. Nelson. Could you read it? Because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit, oh, I'm straining. We are witnesses to the process of restoration. If you think the church is fully restored, you're just seeing the beginning. There's much more to come. Wait until next year, and then the next year. Eat your vitamins, get your rest, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he says the church isn't restored yet? Fully? No. 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 Okay. That's what all the other groups say, the Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witnesses and Christadelphians and the Way International can, and the two-by-twos. Two. Uh, are you, are you going to explain something real quick? Well, I, I thought we'd go through it, yeah, with it, if that's possible. It. Yeah. Right from the start. Let's go from the start. Um, awesome. That's That's true, yeah. Okay. So um, your point is... But like they, 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 they all say the same thing. We've restored the gospel, and after a while, when they keep making doctrinal flip-flops and doctrinal changes, they say, oh, well, we, we're really continuing to restore it. Okay. <laughs> so they start off making a grand pronouncement, we have restored the church. All these groups, hundreds of them, they all say the same thing. We have restored the church. On this date, our prophet or our apostle, or our leader, our bishop, restored the church. Okay. And then... Hundred years later, well, we kind of we're continuing to restore it. So there's a, a little bit of backpedaling. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's pretty nice. That you, you're you're trying to investigate a little bit further. And I befriended him. I don't know whether he will reply to me. I'm going to shut this down because yeah, it's not connected to the internet. But I just froze it at that particular page. Thanks for us. That's cool. All right. So I'm reading right here. Yes, we were going to talk about this. Do you uh, want to go through it all? Because I'm quite happy to do that. Yeah, we I'm quite well, prepared. We we'll like to respect the time that we have. Because okay, we have how much time? We have about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, so well, let's go quickly yeah. through it then. <laughs> Don't All right. worry, this isn't the last you'll see of these guys. No. <laughs> okay. If you'll let uh, if, if, if you them, obviously. <laughs> okay, nice. So it says, God is your loving Heavenly Father, right? I see here that you have references of Abraham 3 through 3, hymns of if you could hide to call up. Uh, do you search for those hymns? Like, yes, oh, there, there is something called the internet. Yeah, good. You know, we, there is, you can do searches now that you couldn't do in the okay. 1980s. And so, so you, yeah. you simply look at things and apply yourself. And I found it very, very profitable going through the book. 
Good. But I have enormous questions, and you, and I must insist, we, I can't look at the essays here, the Mormon essays, okay. on LDS.org, but I have referred in that booklet to one or two of the essays, Plural Marriage in Kirkland and Nauvoo is okay. one. It's not the essay titled Plural Marriage, because if you go to LDS.org and you click on Plural Marriage, that's not it. You have to go to the boxes at the bottom, there's tiny boxes at yeah. the bottom, four of them. And you click on one of those tiny boxes, plural marriage in Kirkland and yeah. Nauvoo. I've got some questions there. Yeah. Um, Robert, how about we go through it and we declare our, our statement and our views right. about this? We read it and all then, the way from the, the start the end, to the end. At the end, you you're happy to do that? Everything that you, you don't agree or you want us to clarify. Yeah. Um, all right. So, God is your loving Heavenly Father. The basic truth of our religion is God is your Father in heaven. Is there any doubt on that? Any questions on that? That God is your Father in heaven? Well, you don't believe that. That's that's what I put down there in the notes. Okay. Um, you teach that he's on a, pl a, a planet near a star called Kolob. Okay. That's uh, the reference there is the Book of Abraham. Okay. Could you? Um, I, I I hadn't. Uh, Abraham chapter three verses two to three. Okay. And there's a hymn. If I could hide to Kolob, oh, is that? Yeah. It's, yeah. If yeah, you could hide to Kolob, high means to run quickly. I had to look that up in the dictionary. I yeah. didn't know that word. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it t talks in the song about where gods began to be. Yeah. And that's a little different to what I believe, because I don't believe, Elder, that God the Father, with respect, yeah. I don't believe that God the Father had a beginning. I, I believe that he is eternal and had no beginning. Okay. So there's a little bit of difference. So when you say that, um, do I believe that God is your Father in heaven, um... Perhaps we might interpret the term God and heaven slightly differently. I don't believe God the Father lives on a planet called Kolob. Okay. With, with respect, sir. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right, we have that clear. You don't sure. believe that... In order to, for you to be baptized, you need to believe everything that we say. If not, you I'm happy be baptized. to listen to okay. everything. Yeah. No, no problem at all. Good. So, he knows you personally and loves you more than you can comprehend. Do you believe that he loves you? Yes. All right. Yes. More than you can even comprehend. Yes, I'm, I'm sure that's true, yes. He wants you to be happy in this life and in eternity. Do you believe that his purpose for you is to be happy in this life? No, I, I think, no, no, not necessarily. I, th I think the Bible says, although there is an aspect of happiness in, in knowing the Lord and following the Lord, it says we're to pick up our cross and follow him. Okay. And certainly when you mature a little bit in the Christian faith, suffering is involved in that. And yeah. boy, if I found that out over the last three years, when I found out, sin and wickedness in the churches and yeah uh, yeah 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 so i've been suffering over the last three okay. four years tremendously um, because i made a staff sorry sir i think it's a part of life isn't it in a, in a sense so it's not something we particularly want to be in yes. but it's just generally something that i mean there were early through. christians who were thrown to the lions there's a famous picture of christians on their knees and the lions coming up into the arena yeah now there are even babies and children and toddlers there yeah. So the idea that, you know, Christian life is happy, 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 happy all the time. Yeah. Um, yes, we are. There is joy and there's happiness. There's the joy of the Lord. But there's also, I'm sorry about that thing flying around. No, no worries. Yeah, I'm um, I can't open the window because the winds are sorry. hurricane force. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forgot what I was saying. See, that, so, like, uh, you believe that it's not always happy, happy? Because no. there's going to be sufferings. There's going to be life. suffering. This yeah. You're to take up your cross, cross and yeah. follow him. And that, unfortunately, is part of the Christian gospel. And God yeah. uses that to mature us through suffering. I would never have had the passion I have for the doctrine of the Trinity if I hadn't joined the Oneness Movement in 1988. Good. Good. Uh, yeah. And I, I think the statement yeah. here is our, it's simplifying for the one who reads it. But he, yeah, let me the, just take a quick yeah. look. Yeah. Yeah. So, understanding that happiness is not always a daily basis thing, is, we're not saying that because you join this church you'll be happy forever. Mm -hmm. No. Taking up on your cross takes courage and suffering and sometimes sadness. But what God wants for you is happiness. Okay. He doesn't want misery for you. That's what I'm trying to say. He doesn't want you to be an angry person or a sad person, but He wants you to find that joy and that suffering. Because, you know, in the furnace of an affliction, right. God, God refines us. Right. Uh, good. Right, yes. Um, I've mentioned the tweet there, the tweet that you yeah. saw. I like it, I like it. Um, uh, so, Russell so M. brought back, restored, is this like a pattern? 
the color. So brought yeah. back, restored, yeah. divine truth. And then yeah. you and the reference is to there because he said the truth actually hasn't been restored. It's actually going to be restored. There's going to be more restoration taking place over the next few years, especially over the next two years, he said in that tweet, if you remember. Okay. So, so the Paul church wasn't restored in 1830, according to the head of the Mormon church, Russell M. Nelson. He became uh, the head head prophet um, in February of this year. I believe the previous gentleman died. Yeah. Um, he, he understanding he took the that, statement. Yes. That's why we're here to explain the statement. Mm -hmm. To explain, like, I don't know what you told me that when you call the temple, you you they said the missionaries are going to explain a little bit more in depth. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Our family father has brought back restored divine truths that were that you can learn and live. So divine truths doesn't mean that he restored like probably organizations, probably certain activities. He restored priesthood authority. He restored um, all the truths that are necessary for our salvation. For example, that we need to be sealed as families in temples, ordinances of salvation that will allow us to return back to him. That's not you have to show me that yeah. from the Bible later. Awesome. But, yeah. You know, we're just on the yeah. first page at the moment, so Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll listen. Want, yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. If we can move on. Yeah, sure. Move. The gospel blesses families and individuals. But to accomplish the purpose of having happiness in this life and in eternity, he provided a plan called the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the gospel in our church signifies good news, or in other words, the teachings of Christ that will allow us to return back to Heavenly Father. His life and teachings are the guide to peace in this life and joy in an eternity. Mm -hmm. So the teachings of Jesus Christ, what is? Forgiveness, repentance, things that will mm -hmm. bring peace in this life, happiness and eternal life. All right, gospel blesses families and individuals. The gospel of Jesus Christ blesses all who accept and live it. Uh, this is the fundamental truth of our religion. People cannot find divine truth or accept that this is truth only if they accept. That's part of faith. Faith is demonstrated by works. You need to show your works to, towards fa Heavenly Father so He can bless you in order to do that. Well, you, you show forth works. Um, one of the best places to teach and apply the gospel is in families. Obviously, it's gospel blesses families and individuals. You asked me if I was married when we met the last time, and I'm not. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, because that, you believe that people are sort of saved through families. That resonated to me a lot, uh, Robert. Um, and I, I'm, I don't want you to tell me like specific things or go to your private life, and I don't, I don't think you're, you're willing to do that because you're, you don't really know us. But I want to make sure and make my statement a little bit more clear that this gospel blesses families and individuals, meaning if you're an individual, the gospel has equal, equal as blessings of a family. God is just, and we'll explain a little bit more of how God. Um, Let's see, God has a perfect plan for families, and He knows our situation. Right now, He knows that probably you don't have a wife, or sons, or daughters, and I don't, I don't even know. But He is just, and He'll grant us that same opportunity as you or, or I, and that's true. Whether in this life or in the other. Sorry, I'm thinking you're not going to say deliver a bride or something. Not that lucky. Not that lucky. Not that lucky. Maybe if you meet someone in the yeah. church. Well, then, 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 yeah. 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 but that's not you. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's yeah. just move. Yeah. Let's just move. God has established families to bring happiness to His children. Yeah. To allow us to learn correct principles in a loving atmosphere and to prepare us to return to Him after we die. Return. I like this. I like this. What is it? Um, I've read about the pre-existence in our doctrine. Yes, okay. in your doctrine um, on the website, and that's something that I would not accept. But that's probably going to be some later yeah. thing. So yeah. I'll we, just mention it now. We're when preparing. We move on. Yeah, we're preparing the scriptures from the New Testament, and Old Testament that we can back up. So you you've read this entire pamphlet? Is that, oh yeah, is that all, all yeah. the way through. Yes. So and marked it up and looked up references. I know just respect And gone to jw.org and read the essays. <laughs> you study, I know. Well, that's how you I, learn. If you don't, you, you, you get exactly what it. you put in. I'm, I'm, I'm useless at that because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't practice. Oh, fair, fair enough. You yeah. want to know your Bible, you have to practice. So my question so I, for you, Robert, is... I practice. Seeing these things, yeah. is it helpful for us to go through sentence by sentence on here? Would you rather us go to what you've highlighted? And, and go from there. I think that would be much better. But okay. what, what did the elder think? 
Well, I Ed, don't want to miss any of my comments, yes. Yes. but I have read it all. I don't need to read it again. I, I, I know what it says. You I, just I, need to refresh the context for I the think, passage. I think we have a period of time already. We set the, the day for your baptism. If you are, if you are fine for yourself, this is true to the You're very anxious to get me baptized, aren't you? Oh, I want your salvation, so that's why. So you think I'm not saved at the moment, simply by trusting on Christ? I believe that he set the example clearly. He was baptized by John the Baptist to fulfill all righteousness. So even him, being holy, needed mm. to be baptized. Mm. Well, um, I don't want to distract, because let's, let's yeah. keep on going through that, but you promised me you would show me from the Bible that tithing is in the Bible. Yes. Leave the Mormon's literature to one side from okay. the Bible. And the other thing is, you show me from the Bible that you have to be baptized to be saved. Okay. And you won't find it in Scripture. Okay. You'll find Acts 2.38 and Acts 22.16, which people misinterpret, but, All right, we want to but, get to but the you must well. keep your promise to me that you will show me from the Bible those two things on two separate occasions. Now, one on tithing from the Bible, because you teach tithing, All right. and the other on baptism. All right. But please go on, yes. Yeah. Do right. you want to read whole sentences or just go on to my I highlighted can, points? We can read the whole sentence, just in case any pops, any Okay, any fine, 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 as you wish. Return. Although family relationships can be challenging at times, you know, we have many challenges in our families. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect, and God knows that. Our Heavenly Father blesses us as we strive to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. The teachings help us strengthen our families. Heavenly Father reveals His Gospel. So, this is the revealing part, Revelation. Yes, yes. As part of His plan, God chooses prophets, such as Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, there's many other prophets, but it is just a simple example. Prophets teach about God and are special witnesses of His Son, Jesus Christ. Receive revelation or direction from the Lord. Teach the gospel to the, to the world and interpret the word of God. Do you agree with those? Um, I know. I should have put a, a reference, Bible reference there, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. God has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. So, having spoken to us by His Son, Jesus Christ... Yeah. of which the apostles who wrote the New Testament, Peter and Mark, were, uh, uh, accompanied uh, the apostles on their missionary journeys. So, Therefore, yeah. the testimony of Christ is from people who accompanied Christ for three years mm -hmm. and are witnesses of Christ's resurrection. That's, that's Acts chapter that 1, verse 20, 21 to 23. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 1 talks about, in the, last, in the past days, uh, God revealed unto us by His prophets, isn't it? Mm. Verse 1. Mm. And then you go to verse, the further verse, and He explains that the Son of God is in the express yeah. image of the Father. Um, so Which the means Lord, the exact image of the, the Father. He's, he's the exact same nature as the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Hmm. Okay, do you, do, you, do you feel that we can come out, or do you want us to... No, I just wanted to make the point that to okay. me, God speaks to us through His Son. His Son, Hebrews chapter 1, verse... 1 and 2, and his son, you brought out elder, he shares his father's nature. He's fully, eternally, completely Yahweh God. Hebrews 1, 3 was the great verse that refuted the Arian heresy. Arians are people who believe like Jehovah's Witnesses. That the father is God and the son is sort of a little bit less than God. And that was the great verse, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The son is fully, eternally Yahweh God. So if God's speaking to me through the son, I don't need the watchtower. I don't need... Um, Mary Father. Baker Eddy of Christian Science to guide me. I don't need Ellen G. White of the Seventh-day Adventist. I don't need the lunatic TV preachers on God TV. God TV is based here in Plymouth, as you might know. I don't need to hear what Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Morris Sorello, uh, Creflo Dollar have to say. And they're all apostles. They're all apostles and prophets. They've got all the titles on the Son. God speaks to me through His Son, and it's through His Son, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, that I listen to. So, I've, yes, on that note, I have two questions. One, mm. from what you've said, do you have see no need or relevance for a prophet? One. And two, believing that this is the Son's Word, completely and holy. I believe the Bible is God's Word. Okay. Yes. So the Bible. The, the, I believe the Bible is God's Word, but many groups add things to the Bible. Yes. Okay, the Jehovah's Witnesses have got the Watchtower. Mm hmm um, Christian Science has um, Key to Life, I can't remember the name of it. I've got lots and lots of books, in, uh, you know, that are added to the Bible. Yeah. Um, 
but to me, God speaks to me through his son. And with the son being fully, eternally Yahweh God, sharing the nature of his father, any other modern day revelation is going to be a step down. It's going to be less than something that Christ has to say. Because Christ is the ultimate expression, the ultimate revelation of God. If you want to know God the Father, the ultimate expression of God is through his son, Jesus Christ. You, that's, that's my position, Elder. You understand? I understand. Yeah. yeah. Do you believe in, in the Trinity? I, I, just from your points that you've made, you mm. talked about at one time you did, or now you don't. I, I'm just confused a little bit. Um, I do believe in the Trinity. Okay. As defined by the creeds of the church. Okay. I say that because when you speak to many Pentecostal and Baptist people, especially evangelicals, they will use the word Trinity, but they're really just making it up as they go along. They haven't really studied it, and they don't really know what it is. Okay. My opinion is a little bit what the creed is, if I'm honest. Pardon? In my opinion, it's a little bit if the, the creed is that long much much of text which tries to define who God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost are. Well, what happened right? was, in the 3rd and 4th centuries, different people arose yeah. with different views. One group were the Trinitarians, mm -hmm. one group were the modalists, that's oneness, that's what I was involved in the 1980s. Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. So, yeah. Jesus is like an actor on the stage with three different masks, yeah. except yeah. it's moderated yeah. and it's more advanced now than it used to be. <laughs> and then there's the other group that are like the, the Arians. They're like Jehovah's Witnesses. The Father is God and the Son is something less than God. And these groups fought. And that's why the creeds came forth. Everyone had their own creeds. So to say the Trinitarians are wrong because we produce creeds would be ridiculous because everyone's produced their own creeds, including the Mormon Church, the Articles of Faith, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. So everyone's got, 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 got creeds. Bear in mind, the Articles of Faith is just basically, yeah. Uh, do you, you know a little bit of background as to what the Articles of Faith are? I don't, I know, not, 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 not from no. memory. I don't want to get sidetracked. But no, that's all right. To answer the question on the Trinity, yes, I do believe in the Trinity, but I'm reluctant to say I believe in the Trinity because people think, oh, yeah, you believe what Fred told me last sure. week, that Jesus is the Father. Or is there Sister Simple who speaks in, you know, woo, Sister Simple. And, and Sister okay. Simple says, you know, this, 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 that, and the other. So and uh, it Trinity is abs be... it's it's a madhouse. It's a, the evangelical faith is a madhouse. It's literally a madhouse. It's people don't know what they believe, and they don't know who God is. They don't know who Christ is. They don't know where there's salvation. There are some godly people in it, of course. Some godly people who are far more godly than me and serve Christ and love Christ more than more than me and are better than me and more knowledgeable than me. Um, but for every people like that, there's a, a whole room full of lunatics. And they just make it all up. So, um, having been involved in the oneness cult and got myself out, I was only in it for seven, eight, nine months, uh, and I've studied it for thirty years. I've debated the Trinity online. I spoke to I spoke to one of the world's top Unitarian scholars called Sir Anthony Buzzard, or Professor Sir Anthony Buzzard, and I debated him on aspects of the Trinity online. So I have debated online, even though I'm not a scholar myself, I'm just an ordinary person from Devonport. Um, but I'm passionate for the doctrine of who Christ is. I'm passionate for the doctrine of the Trin Trinity, because if Christ died for me, it's important for me to hold to those truths and to maintain those truths and to be able to promote and preach those truths. Um, but what you find is, you see, you see, I don't get paid a penny if I speak to Sir Anthony Buzzard, I used to go online on the internet, evangelise in, in forums online. No one pays me a penny. I'm quite happy with that. I don't look for money. But the amazing thing is people who do get paid money, people who get the free house and the free car and the pension and the salary and the other perks, they often don't know it. They haven't researched it. They haven't. I've spent 30 years on the Trinity and ten years on, almost 10 years on tithing. I know my stuff. You don't get to debate the world's top Unitarian scholar, Sir Anthony Buzzard, or one of the top scholars, uh, if you don't know your stuff. And yet when you speak to so many, my background is in the Evangelical Church, Baptist and Pentecostal churches, when you speak to these people, they haven't studied. They haven't studied. And out of pride, they, they say, oh, I'm above you. I'm a pastor. And they, they don't want to admit that maybe they haven't studied. Um, 
and frankly, you're, you're not made very welcome in, in many churches if you know your Bible. Because they yeah. want people who are pliable. They want people who are simple. Follow, and follow, they, follow us and basically you'll be fine. And the number one doctrine, the number one thing to study now, I mean, the Trinity and the deity of the Christ is the, is the most important, the gospel. But it's tithing. You have to study tithing because it's taking over everywhere. And that is such an important doctrine, not, not for the gospel, but unfortunately that's what a lot of these modern churches are based on. And I've been blessed out of my stock studying that for almost 10 years now. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Yeah, what time is it right now? It is half past four. We've only done one page. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we can try another one. Yeah, we can try another one. Yeah, sure. Uh, there you go. Good. There you go. Oh, My hands shake a little bit. I've given blood to the doctor. I'm being tested for Parkinson's. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. so let's hope it's a negative. Yes. It can be a benign tremor, but it's really bad sometimes. All right. Is there anything that we can do? or No. Okay. No, it's... No. All right. Thank you. Prophets receive the priesthood. So I can't hear. Prophets receive yep. the priesthood. All Christians, 1 Peter 2, 4. Do you want us to look at the reference or any, any comments? or do you want to... The first the Peter chapter 2 verse 9 simply says that all Christians have, um, are, are in the priesthood. Okay. That's just what that verse um, said. I don't want to dis distract right. you. We can... Or the authority to speak and act in the name of God to lead his children. People who follow the prophets receive the blessings God has promised. Those who reject the gospel and God's prophets lose those blessings and distance themselves from God. Those who reject the prophet and abandon their commitment to follow God are in a condition called apostasy. Is there anything that you disagree, or is is that you want me to? Well, sir, we're only on the second page. All right. Um, it is a little harsh to say those who don't follow the prophet, you mean your prophet, okay, is in apostasy. And remember, the prophet's name is um, Mr. Net. Was it? President Nelson? Oh, Nelson. President, President Nelson. Yeah. And he said the truth is being restored, and it, ha it will be restored even more over the next few years. Okay. So, you know, he's not advocating a full restoration in 1830. So there are aspects of the church, or more mm. specifically, so the gospel of yes. Jesus Christ, yes. is a better way of putting it. Uh, we believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ and the fundamentals that made up the gospel of Jesus Christ, that those truths have been restored. Now, if I was to expand upon what President Nelson was explaining yes. a little bit for you, and we could jump in if I'm wrong here, guys, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something, 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 something you might want to know, trust me. Yeah. My, myself, other, other way, Anna, other Johnson, we are far from perfect teachers. And actually, I like what you said um, about that um, if we don't know something, we'll go away and research it. And, and we'll say that. And we'll say, we, that's, we, that's we, what we, I do. We, we don't know. That's what um, I do. Because there will be a couple of questions mm -hmm. that you probably yeah. ask us that we probably actually yeah. have a clue. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, um, expanding upon what uh, President Nelson was explaining, that so the world we live in today is a very different time to what Jesus Christ lived in, would you agree? Oh, of in course, yes. Of, yes. Kind of, obviously, yeah. we've got a lot more stuff going on. We've got technology, all this, that, and the other to be able to help us and advance sorts and certain aspects. Now, what President Nelson is basically explaining there is that the fundamentals of the church have been restored, also we believe, inside of, uh, and that was from and through the prophet Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. which, um, if we get time, I won't go in and explain further today. Um, and those fundamentals were, were restored. Um, now the development of that restoration, mm. I, I, I can testify and I know that that probably is still happening, that the fundamentals uh, are there. Um, I see. Okay. But the, um, I mean, if you take kind of like the prophecies in the Bible, for example, like in Revelations, I mean, we know that they're still basically coming to pass. That the restoration in itself, uh, that um, the gospel of, of Christ is still going forth, mm. it's still going forward. The missionaries, Elder Rihanna, Elder, uh, Elder Johnson, Johnston, yes. they are teaching the yes. gospel, um, and that gospel okay. is still being preached and further hastened. So the work is still going on to uh, in, invite people, such mm. as yourself, to, um, yeah. to learn about Jesus Christ. And I, I think that's one thing we want to, as much as other Vayanas say, mm. and is loving the idea of baptism, that is a goal, definitely. Mm. Um, I mean, our, the, the missionary's purpose 
and even, I see. And even members of the church's purposes. I got that from the district, district one and district two, which I've looked on YouTube. You know the series? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. Um, that we are to invite people to come unto Jesus Christ. And that's actually what we're kind of generally doing. Is mm. that, like say, you want to learn more about Christ. Yes. Although none of the missionaries on District 1 or District 2 were half as zealous as El Elder Bannon trying to get me <laughs> baptised by the yeah. 2nd of February. Yeah. Well, I must admit I'll, say nothing. I'll say nothing. I'm, I'm almost smirking a little bit. I'm thinking of what you said earlier about the, the bride, the male order. I've got the male order, right? And, the bride. and I'm not trying to be rude and, and smirk as you talk, but I, you're talking and I'm thinking of the male order bride coming. So, I'm sorry about that. Um, what were the comments that I made there? Because it's best perhaps to read the paragraph without interruption and then yeah, go back is, and yeah. look at my comments. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, right. Or perhaps I could have, take a look. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, prophets receive the priesthood. Well, I have said there that 1 Peter 2 9, all Christians are priests. I don't see an Aaronic or a Melchizedek priesthood for Christians. Melchizedek priesthood clearly in Hebrews 7 for Jesus Christ alone. Um, or have uh, prophets have the authority to speak? Well, Jesus Christ has all authority. I quoted Matthew twenty-eight eighteen, and God speaks to us in these last days through His Son. So, if Christ has all authority in heaven and on earth, Matthew twenty-eight eighteen, and if God speaks to us through His Son, I better listen to His Son, Jesus Christ, because He's the one with all authority. And how do you, and how would you yourself see you perceiving that information through the Bible? because the people who wrote the Bible would, were accompanied Christ for three years and were witnesses of Christ's resurrection, so I can trust them. True. Yeah, Very but true. I can't trust Benny Hinn, I can't trust Kenneth Copeland and the other people on God TV, and because they haven't accompanied Christ for three years, sir. Sorry, no, 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 you, please, sir. Yeah, no. They haven't accompanied Christ for three years and they haven't witnessed Christ's resurrection, mm -hmm. which is the qualification for an apostle in Acts chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. Um... People who follow the prophets receive the blessings God has promised. Um, I wasn't happy with that because I've said here, follow Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. And I found another verse, and I can't quote it from memory, um, John ten twenty-seven. I think it's about following Christ. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So when it says here on page, almost page four, people who follow the prophets receive the blessing God has promised. The Bible says I'm to follow Christ. He's the one I'm to follow, John 20, 20, John, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm shaking like mad, you can see. John 10, 10 20, 27. Um, the other thing is those who reject the prophets, it says here, and abandon that, their commitment to follow God are in a condition called apostasy. Um, but the Bible warns that many false prophets have gone out of the world, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. So I'm to test all things. Mm -hmm. I'm to test all things. Okay. Robert, when we... Oh, I don't, want to, I, I don't want to take another one because I've taken no, no, one no. from you already. No, that, yeah, that's okay. No, that's all right. And it's here somewhere buried. <laughs> that's all right. I, I haven't been too vocal today. I've just simply sat and listened, really, at your points. And in the very beginning when you said, you know, I, I believe that God is eternal. He doesn't reside on a planet, mm -hmm. you know, right? Yep. Very much so we believe that God is eternal. He's an eternal being. Very much so we believe that God and Jesus Christ are the same as you were describing them. We don't view them as on levels, but they are completely unified with the Holy Spirit and purpose. Well, in the booklet here, it gives um, uh, a picture of God the Father and Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as two separate beings, two separate... And that is, that is one of our beliefs. That's on page 10. Yeah. That's true. Um, but I don't believe the Father is ever seen and I believe the Father and Son have the same substance, not two separate substances. They're appearing here as two separate. And you, you know, I mean, First Timothy six sixteen says the Father is never seen. He's the invisible God who who cannot be seen. You, so you believe in Hebrews, right? Well, 
This is... Sorry, yes. Yeah. Sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. Mm -hmm. Who did Paul saw in a vision? Jesus Christ. Sat down on the right hand is an idiomatic phrase because the right hand is your sword arm. So God the Father is never seen, 1 Timothy 6.16. It's not saying he saw Jesus Christ sit down with God the Father next to him. It's simply an, an idiom, an idiomatic phrase. I mean, if you speak to an African-American, for instance, they might say, that's cool. And being English, I might say, oh, it's cold, is it? It's rather, rather chilly, right? And you'd be like, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, but there you are. Those are little idioms that we use. I can't think of any anymore, but we use them all the time in our culture. And in the Hebrew Bible and in the in the Greek Bible, the right hand means the position of power and authority. It's not to be taken literally as a literal physical right hand. Because God the Father is not seen. Colossians 1.15 calls him the invisible God. John 1.18 calls him um, the, the invisible God. And 1 Timothy 6.16 says he let me just read the verse um, he is not seen and he cannot be seen um, here we are 1 Timothy 6 16 who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light whom no man has seen or can see to whom be honor and everlasting power so I testify to you that the father God the father cannot be seen no man has seen him, and no man can see him. Can you read that again, please? Yeah. Who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honour and everlasting power. 1 Timothy 6.16. So the, God the Father is not seen, you see. And uh, going along with that belief and, and that yeah. page there, Will that then imply for your beliefs that Jesus Christ couldn't be seen as well? No, no. The, the passage is talking about God the Father. Okay. Jesus Christ certainly is seen. Um, he walked this earth as a man. We People saw Jesus Christ. Right. But God the Father, sir, is not seen. So they are two separate. They're distinct. They share the same nature. Christ has a, hum a human nature that was added 2,000 years ago to his divine nature. But God the Father is not seen, because that's what, you know, three verses of the Bible say, Colossians 1.15, John 1.18, and this verse here, 1 Timothy 6.16. But Jesus Christ definitely is seen. So what you're saying, we will never see God? Uh, at the present time, we'll never see God. What happens after glorification, I, I don't honestly know, and I don't think the Bible goes into that. But the context for 1 Timothy 6.16, which was written in about AD, the late, the late 50s, would be at that present time, nobody had seen God, or nobody would see God during this time period up until the second coming of Jesus Christ. What happens after that, I honestly don't know, and I wouldn't want to pontificate on that because I'm not the Pope <laughs> does that verse make sense 1 Timothy 6.16 uh, yeah okay a little bit okay older yeah I think yeah like respecting time and oh, sure. and the fact that we do have many of your questions to continue to go over yeah okay if I was just to simply explain all of those pages as simply as possible I would say 100% that God loves all of his children, sending us with the resources we need to know how we can return to live with him. Yeah. One of them, one of the means he uses is prophets. Moses. His role, the Ten Commandments. To live at that time. They were fulfilled. Yes. That law was fulfilled through the return of Jesus Christ on the earth. Right. Through his sacrifice, he had apostles who he said, please go spread my gospel. All right. They did so. We know over time that they died. And that priesthood, I think our definition of priesthood is a little bit different, which we would love to go into another time. Yeah, another time, of course, Elder, But yes. it's, it is authority. It is God's permission to preach his word. Now, the role of a prophet 
is a spokesman, a mouthpiece. Russell M. Nelson does not replace God the Father. He does not replace Jesus Christ. He's the man on the okay. earth today that holds his authority. Okay. Which is delegated through the church. <clears throat> I can't agree with that, but okay. I'm willing to listen, I'm just, Elder, to I'm what you have to say. I believe. Okay. All right. And when we say that this is restored, those fundamental truths were restored to a 14-year-old boy who had a question of which church was true in the 1800s. But on the translation, the, the, the essay on uh, LDS.org, um, and some of them are hard to find, they're deliberately hard to find, you have to actually click on tiny boxes at the bottom of the screen, but the one for the translation of the Book of Mormon, it claimed the vision, there's nine versions of the vision, the first vision, um, he claimed he had this vision in 1820, mm -hmm. when, uh, but it wasn't written down until 1832. It wasn't written down until 12 years later. Now that essay, the translation of the Book of Mormon, on LDS.org, is published with the authority of the uh, First Presidency, I think it's called. Um, are they the 12 apostles or are they the 70? The First Presidency is the prophet. Yes. And his two counselors. Right, well, th that's so what three. it says, the first presidency. Mm -hmm. um, in Joseph Smith's journal, because he kept journals apparently, he wrote nothing at all about this vision in his journal for 1820. It wasn't until 1832 there's the first mention. And when he wrote it down, um, he claimed that it was Nephi who visited him, not Moroni. So. This is what I found on LDS.org. The essays are absolutely, truly fascinating um, because what's actually happening, and it goes back to my fascination with tithing, a lot of groups today are going to be under a lot of pressure over the next few years regarding groups that practice tithing. Because if you claim things and you take 10% of people's money, you have to deliver what you promise. Um, you can't make religious claims take 10% of people's money and then not deliver those claims. And so the LDS faith, as far as I know, um, is in danger of numerous lawsuits, thousands of lawsuits from people who've been paying out tithes, but who um, are claiming, look, we were told something, we were told, we were told a basically a sugar-coated version of Mormonism when we joined the church. But the actual facts are very different. And so the LDS Church, for legal reasons, have had to put these essays online so that if anyone joins the church now, if I get baptized on the 2nd of February 2019, as Elder Banier is very keen for me to do, um, I can't sue the church because the essays are on LDS.org. It's also your choice. Pardon? It's also your choice. It's my choice. Yeah. But before the publication of these essays, <coughs> people have, there, there's a lot of, there could be a lot of lawsuits over the next few years, because people are, that's why the essays were put online, because people can claim, look, we're actually, we weren't told um, accurate things about Mormon history. For instance, the translation of the Book of Mormon, um, it says that he had, he used to do glass looking, he'd look at a piece of glass in the dark and you'd see where buried treasure was, but he then, the, the, the essay on, on LDS.org, on the translation of the Book of Mormon, says he had a hat, and he put a stone in a hat called a peepstone, a brown peepstone. They showed a picture of the peepstone. It was shown at general, the general conference in Utah a few years ago. He'd cover his head, and then um, letters would appear on the peepstone. That was how it's claimed the Book of Mormon was translated. Now you're going to you're going to him? Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, no, using a peep stone inside a hat. So he had a hat. He put a stone in the hat <coughs> and he buried his face in the hat, covering covering the sides so it was dark. And then he'd see the translation of the Book of Mormon on a stone inside a hat. Now that is on LDS.org and it's with the authority of the First Presidency. And the essay is titled the translation of the Book of Mormon. On some of these, they'll have a, an essay, and it won't go into a lot of detail. You've got to click on the little links at the bottom, which go into far more detail, and have footnotes. Um, so I was shocked when I read that. 
um, because I remember years ago seeing a picture of Joseph Smith and he had, the, he had golden plates and he had a pen and he was sort of looking at the plates and sort of copying, copying down. Oh, we know uh, the iron, well, yeah. we, uh, yeah. obviously the, yeah. the, well, essentially they're called seer stones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we know that the iron and some of them were used to, in the work of yes. translation. Yeah. Yeah. But that came as quite a shock to me. And again, that is on your own website, lds.org, and it's been put there for legal reasons. Because you have to, you, if you give people a sugar-coated gospel and you get 10% of their money for 20, 30 years, they can sue you. Yeah. And so the LDS faith is going to have a huge crisis over the next few years, and that's why they've put the essays out. Because from now on, nobody can, can sue, because it, it's all there if you choose to look at it. And most people, of course, they're not going to look at it. They're not going to put the effort in. It's too much effort. You know, Robert, like respectable, mm, okay. they do. Right? So um, thank you for studying. Thank you very much, Nate. Could we leave you with a simple invitation? That Book of Mormon that is laying yeah. around here somewhere? It is here somewhere, there I promise it you. <laughs> it is here, I promise There's you. There's a page about this. Yep, it's about this big in the very front, the introduction. Oh, the testimony of the three witnesses. A little bit different. It, ju it just says the introduction. And right. It's a page of what right. the book is. Right. Now, I, I feel like, yes, looking into those essays, reading the introduction will give you more of a background, okay. more of... What's up? Another thing to add, Robert. Yes. Like, we really appreciate you letting us come in. Not only because the weather is really bad outside. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. But <laughs> also because you, you are willing to learn. But in order for us to make effort in spending time and thinking about you and breaking our heads for you, we invite people to do certain things that will strengthen their faith mm -hmm. and conversion. In the Gospel of Jesus Christ, restored to the Prophet Joseph Smith, and those invitations are: read the Book of Mormon, whether you don't want to or not. No, I'm quite, I'm quite, I'm quite happy to do that. You're quite happy. I'm quite to happy do to do that. that right. Yes, now, I, it is here somewhere. I will find it, and now, I do have another. I right. got the triple book with that, the Pearl of Great Price and the Doctrine uh, and Covenants. Okay, good. good. Now, okay, yeah. excellent. If you're yeah. willing to read the Book of Mormon, we'll give you a call. Our thing that we do as missionaries, I don't know if you saw in the district or district two, we call people during the day, just for like five or I don't know two minutes if you have two minutes or three, just to check out how you're doing. Yeah, sure. Can we do that? Of course you can, but no voicemail. I don't have voicemail. No voicemail. To my phone. We'll call you and we should say, hey, how are you doing? What's up? How's your day? Never phone me on Monday evening because I go to board games Monday evening in the centre of town and the phone is off. I don't even take it with me. All right, me. we we will call you on a little day. All right. Not, okay, not that's fine. So if you will, we'll tell you hey, if you can read chapter three or for or first Nephi. Can yeah, you do I'm, that? I'm quite happy awesome. to do that. And when yes. we come back, we'll read some verses with you. Is that okay? Absolutely fine. Awesome. More than happy to. All do the that. invitations will extend eventually. For example, are you willing to come to church? That's an invitation, and it'll take effort. But we are going to see that you're progressing. Mm -hmm. If not, we're kind of like just having a discussion of who knows more doctrine, and we're not here to do that. You're you're gonna defeat us, you know. I saw the marks. I saw that you're. I wanna. I wanna actually ask you how are you. How did you study the scriptures that, that good? I wanna like know things that you do that I wanna play. You become personally. enthusiastic about it. Yeah, I want. I wanna do that. And so, reli religion is really boring when it's a monologue. Yeah, it's one of the things I found about churches. If you go to a church and I'm your pastor, it's just blah blah blah. Blah, yeah. blah, two hours later, blah, blah, yeah. blah. You go home now, you pay your tithe, you go home, and you come back next week. It's a two-way thing. It's exciting. It's passionate. You get enthusiastic when there's a dialogue, when there's a two-way discussion. And it doesn't really matter what it is about. Robert, Okay. Thanks. take care. Thanks, cheers. Thanks. Um, there's this back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, I'll need that. Thank hey. you very much. I'll shake your hand we'll, as well. well Johnston. <laughs> well, Paul, we bring an, another member again with us. Is that okay? Yes. I don't know, I don't know if Troy's going to come because probably you scare him oh, off. I, but. I, I, <laughs> four yeah. might be. Four might be. Well, if someone doesn't mind sitting on here, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll try and do I something. Uh, I, I doubt there'd be four. Um, I think there would only be three. And this, yeah. uh, if you're <laughs> passing back, because I will need my brolly for Monday, mm -hmm. but if you need a brolly, one of you needs a brolly. What's a brolly? Uh, umbrella. 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 Oh! <laughs> I actually do need an umbrella. <laughs> if you need to borrow it, um, you can always return it. If I'm not here, I'm usually in the community room, which is just down, mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm.
It, I, might, I it might, if it breaks, don't worry. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. If, if it happens, it happens. <laughs> if right. it happens, it happens. Stay I can't blame, right. blame you for the wind. Stay right. thank you. Okay, thank you. Cool. Think of me, I've got to try and get this flat. There's a light behind you, sir. There you go. There's a, uh, I've got to try and get this flat decent and it's... I don't know if you say the district, but missionaries also eat, so... <laughs> if you want to invite us for dinner, you're more than happy to well, You wouldn't with like my yourself. cooking. You think I'm funny? You think you? <laughs> you wouldn't think you're in heaven listening, drinking my cooking. You think you've gone to the other place? Yeah, <laughs> it's not very pleasant. No. Would you like Mexican food? I love it. Yes. Yeah. Well, we can. Yeah, like, I, love, I love I love chili. It's delicious. We we can bring some burritos and eat it with you, and then talk with it. If you want? Well, we'll call you. Yeah, we'll sure. Call. If I'm not in. Um, just leave it, you know, the community room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're not supposed to go in if anyone is there, but you can just shove it. Just put it to the extreme left of the door, okay. or the extreme so, right okay. of the door, okay. and I'll, I'll find it the you next time. You can even leave a there. little note that says Robert with an arrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you just put it through the door, All right. uh, that'll be absolutely fine. Just leave it to one side. Hey. I'll Thank need you. it for Monday because I go to my board games group on Monday. I always, lose. Monday. I always get beaten. Wait, you need, you need it this Monday? Yeah, every Monday evening, yeah. You, you need it this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I have a small umbrella. But thank you so much. If you're going to need it on Monday, we're not going to be here on Monday. We're going to be away. Okay. What so. do you want to do? Because I don't want you to get wet if... Well, have, we have a car, so I don't think we're going to be sure? outside. Yeah. Okay. Hey, All right. Thank, thank you, Robert. Robert. Cheers. Cool. All right. Awesome. All righty. Have a good night. All right. All right. Thank you. Take thank care. you, Elder Johnston. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> all right, all the best. Have a lovely evening, Cheers. my friend. Cheers, thank you, bye. bye, -bye.